Marcus Mosiah Garvey was born August the 17th, 1887 in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. After coming of age, he began to travel and work throughout the Caribbean, Central America, and London. He didn't like the overall treatment of blacks in those areas, so upon his return to, back to Jamaica, he established the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities Leagues of the World in 1914. During his travels, he was inspired by Booker T. Washington's autobiography, Up From Slavery. After corresponding with Booker T. Washington, an invitation was extended to Garvey to visit Tuskegee. By Garvey's arrival to the U.S. in 1916, Washington had already died. So Garvey set up meetings with other black leaders and eventually settled in Harlem. By August the 17th, 1918, he established the Negro World. June 1919, the UNIA boasts over 2 million members. By June 27th of the same year, Garvey establishes the Black Star Line. The Black Star Line actualized their 10 million capital stock campaign in only two years. So by 1920, the UNIA boasts over 4 million members. October 11th, 1919, J. Edgar Hoover, who was the special assistant to the Attorney General and the head of the General Intelligence Division of the Bureau of Investigation, launched an investigation into Garvey and the UNIA. He writes to his superior the following. Unfortunately, however, Garvey has not yet violated any federal law whereby he could be proceeded against on the grounds of being an undesirable alien from the point of view of deportation. By November 1919, the investigation by the Bureau wound up with them hiring five African-American agents to dig up information and infiltrate the UNIA. From that infiltration, they produced up trumped up charges of mail fraud, being that the UNIA had advertised a not yet purchased ship that they were going to name the Phyllis Wheatley. But in the photo in the ad, it still showed the name of the USS Orion on it. By the fall of the Black Star Line, the UNIA claims 900 divisions and over 6 million members worldwide. By 1925, the vast properties, money, and assets of the UNIA and Garvey were seized. Garvey was then sentenced to a five-year prison sentence in the Atlanta Federal Prison. But in 1927, after two years served, his sentence was commuted by President Calvin Coolidge on the terms of him being deported back to Jamaica. After then, Garvey was an active in activist as his following dwindled due to the distance and the organization being infiltrated by the FBI. Garvey dedicated the rest of his life trying to uplift the hearts, minds, and souls of Africans at home and abroad. After a lifetime commitment to improving the lives of his people, he had a heart attack after reading an er erroneous obituary of his that ran in the United States. He died the very next day on June the 10th, 1940 in London, England.